Well guys, thought I'd make another video. It's still Sunday. Cole and I are at yet another park. I just we figured I'd come over here because I was running errands. So I figured I'd stop here at this park here. Let Cole stretch his legs. Run around a little bit. Me run around a little bit. <clears throat> but um Yeah, like I say it's Sunday guys. I'm a little irritated because uh, I got blown it a couple of times because I was going too damn slow. Whatever. A couple of people passed me really fast. Then cut me off. Whatever. I don't let stuff like that bother me. But uh, I did yell out some obscenities because, uh, you know, no matter how even tempered you are, you can still be annoyed. By some of the stupid shit that people do. I just yelled out something to the effect of. It's Sunday, asshole. What the hell you got to go in that much of a hurry on a goddamn Sunday? You know, that I don't get. On a Sunday, guys, nobody should be in a hurry on a Sunday. You know, that should be one day. You should be able to take life as it comes. And live life, you know, at a slower pace. You know, you'll be back to that bullshit ass rat race again tomorrow. Soon enough. You know, why rush it by coming out and driving around acting crazy trying to get from here to there faster than is absolutely necessary. But people, they're so used to driving fast, being in a hurry, dealing with the rat race, that uh, they do it no matter what. It's just the pace that's, that's been established in life by society. It's just been established. Everybody does what everybody else does because everybody's doing it. And that's the excuse. Everybody else is doing it, you know. So, it must be right. You know, never given a second thought that maybe everybody else is doing it because everybody else is doing it. They don't know why. They don't know the reason. They're just doing it because everybody else is doing it. And everybody else is doing it because everybody else is doing it. That's the world we live in. And uh, it's just crazy, guys. You know, I talk about my uh, financial situation a lot on the channel, uh, trying to help other people out. When it comes to younger people, I'm like, yeah, go ahead and stay on your grind, as they call it. You know, you really have to when you're younger because you've got the energy and the stamina and uh, brain capacity everything to do it so yeah you should do it try to make as much money as you can get paid as much as you can uh, stand out on your job try to climb that corporate ladder because you need to try to make as much money as you possibly can as soon as you can you know when you're young you know people don't want to pay you much when you're young because they figure you're inexperienced but uh if you get on a job and you work on a job for a year's time, that's more than enough experience to learn how to do your job. If you can't do a job after a year's time, it's time to move on to a different job. I hopped a lot of jobs when I was younger because I would get on one job and I would learn how to do that job really good on that job. And I would try to get my a raise or whatever, try to get more money for the job. If the boss didn't give me more money, you know, give me a raise substantially, I'd take my experience and my knowledge and go try to get another job someplace else. You know, and now I, now I got the, a year's worth of experience to uh, go to the other job with and negotiate a, a better deal than I had at the other job before that. And then go working for that job 
work for a year there or two. If the money is good, I'll stick around. But if I can see that there's a better opportunity, I'm always keeping my eyes open for more money. If I can find something making more, guess what? I'm bouncing. Going to the next job to make more money. That's how I started off. I started off, you know, back when I was started off working when I was younger, $5 an hour was a lot of money. $5 an hour, $200 a week. Uh, that was that was good money. But um, it didn't work out like that. You know, I didn't take into account tax money, whatever. So that $200 a week wasn't $200 a week. It was more like $150, $175 or less, depending on uh, the fact that you don't have kids or whatever. They're, they're going to take out a lot more taxes. You know, so, but even still, at $5 an hour, if you're living with your parents, you don't have any house payments, you don't have any debt, no car payments, or whatever, that's good money. You can buy yourself a pretty nice bicycle, pretty nice, you know, a decent car if you save up, you know, and then you've got credit because you don't have any bad credit, you know, which not having any credit is sometimes worse than not having, uh, than having bad credit. But, uh, <clears throat> But anyway, I went from $5 an hour to like $6 an hour working security. That was good money back then, working security, considering all I had to do was sit on my butt and sign people in and out of a building. I did that, making good money. You know, that was good money back then. But then I went from that to working a job, making uh, $11 an hour. Now that changed my life. I was making $11 an hour as opposed to $6 an hour. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go now. I thought I had the world at my fingertips. And I did. And uh, I was working security too, making the $6 an hour as well. So that brought me up to like uh, $16, $17 an hour at that point. But I had to work two jobs to do it. Two full-time jobs. But I did it, and um, then that was enough between the two jobs to uh, buy my first house. And um, that house that I bought back then, I was still in my 20s. So got my first house in my 20s because I worked my butt off. I didn't throw money away on drugs and alcohol and stupidity. I was able to uh, move up, whatever, to making $13, $14 an hour because I was getting better at my trade. I was a bricklayer at the time, made more money, learned my skill better. I was really fast at it because I was physically strong, able to do it. So I stood out from the other people because I would throw those blocks in the wall, guys. I was really good at it and I was really smart. I was able to come on the job and figure out how to square the building, how to find the building lines and everything. Um, I was able to find the, the benchmarks for the building, where, where the building would locate the building. I learned how to read plans. I learned how to read plans in school, in uh, basically school, before I even went out to work. So I became a valuable asset to the companies I worked for. And I worked for small enough companies just starting off to where um, they appreciated me and I'd be I'd be uh, noticed you know a big company you're not gonna be noticed a big company you don't know the boss personally better to be working for a smaller company than where you know the boss personally and you can what they call kiss his ass or whatever and you'll move up faster that way if you're working for a company that's huge you got a boss over you, a boss over him, a boss over him, and a boss over him. You can bust your ass until you're blue in the balls. And you're not going to get anywhere. Because any extra you do, your boss over you or the boss over him is going to take all the credit for it. And all you're going to do is get all the extra work. And you're not going to move up any more than where you are. Because to move up, you have to take their jobs. And they're not going to have that. So the best thing to do is get with a small company and move up in that company. And then move to a bigger companies to where they're paying more money 
not not getting more responsibility, just getting more money for the skill you have. That's the way to do it. <clears throat> and then, but anyway, within three years, I was able to move up to top pay, which for a bricklayer was at the time $32 an hour, which was really good money. And I only had to work eight hours a day, and I only had to, uh, I was able to quit the other jobs because I was making enough money on one job. And uh, making that kind of money, I was able to save up enough to pay my house off and uh, live my life, you know. And that's where I'm at now. At 60 years old, my house is paid off. My car is paid off. Uh, I don't have any credit card debt. Well, a little bit because I was off for a month. Stop. We got a dog. Good boy. Good boy, right here. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Cole. Good boy. Let's see what's down here. Anyway, they're going on their way. He's got his dog on a leash. So what? People that have their dog on a leash, they love to give you that side eye. Like, why ain't your dog on a leash? My dog's on a leash. How come your dog isn't on a leash? But my, my dog is special, asshole. You know, my dog has gained the privilege of being off leash. So, eat your heart out. But anyway, that's my advice to younger people. If you're out here trying to find a job, trying to make your way in life, trying to do your grind thing, that's the way to do it. Somebody my age is 60 years old. I got two more years and I'm done. And I'm not gonna try and stretch it out any more than that because I got relatively good health and um, I'm still able to have fun. And uh, I don't have any high overhead or crazy bills. So I'm good. And I can uh, retire at 62 and just relax the rest of my life. Probably still work when I, you know when I want to, you know, because at that point you already got a guaranteed twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars a year coming in from uh, retirement, you know. And uh, any extra you make is yours to keep, up to twenty thousand dollars which uh, I'm perfectly capable of surviving on uh, $20,000 a year with my, for my, my uh, financial situation now. Now, a lot of people can't do that. You know, if you can't do that, you're in trouble. You're going to have to work. I probably will work because I'm greedy and I want to be able to enjoy life, not just uh, sit in a wheelchair in a rocking chair on a porch and look at other people have fun I want to be out there so it takes money to go out and travel and go places and do things so that's why I need another another job even if I'm retired get him Cole go get him oh, he's sneaking up on him he done learned <laughs>